Thank you, Madam Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I rise today to express my opposition to LD347. I know there are many reasons why people in this room have taken a position opposite of mine. I know many believe that the opinion of assisted suicide is so personal that each person should have the choice of when and how to end their life. After all, they might say it is a matter of choice. And the decision of one person to end his or her life does not mean that others have to decide the same thing. I, however, disagree. Not only does one person's decision always impact others, but our actions here today will send a message across the state about the value and dignity of all human life. And sadly, those whom it will impact the most negatively are likely those who most need to be reaffirmed their value and worth as human beings, no matter their condition or their diagnosis. In 2015, Ma Maggie Carner, a Connecticut woman who at the time was living with the same medical condition that Brittany Maynard had, penned an article that was published in the Hartford Courant entitled, Suicide Options Would Undermine My Cancer Battle. In the article, Maggie confronts the push by assistant suicide advocates in her home state to adopt physician assistant suicide and explains the ways in which that push made it harder for her to continue her own fight against cancer. Among other things, she said, I have been diagnosed with a terminal brain cancer. Because of my diagnos diagnosis, I would likely be eligible for state's help to commit suicide under a bill that's before the General Assembly. And that is terrifying. Like many Connecticut residents, I have wondered whether I would want my doctor to offer suicide as a treatment for deadly cancer. The out-of-state proponents of the bill regarding physician-assisted suicide suggest having the ability to end your life legally is comforted. But I can tell you from a personal experience that is nearly as troubling as the cancer itself. You see, I get strength and comfort from the knowledge that nobody is going to give up on me, medically, psychologically, or, hist or hist uh, holistically. There we go. Right now, I have the firm support of the state and my fellow citizens in my desire to live, no matter the cost or burden. If that were to change the tiny knowledge that I might be straining my family, friends, doctors, or community resources unnecessarily would be a heavy burden. The constant option for suicide would wear at my resolve and I fear become an unspoken duty for me and others. Fellow House members, we don't live in pure isolation. One person's decision to end their life and one legislature's decision to sanction it would surely impact all of us. It would also send a message that some people are less valued, less worthy, that some lives deserve suicide assistance rather than suicide prevention. Sadly, Maggie died in 2015, but her message that communities must care for one another in their darkest days live on as her family continues to speak out against physician-assisted suicide. Fellow legislators, when we, as a state and as a society, say that suicide is wrong and tragic in most cases, but acceptable for others, we tell those others that they are more expendable. And for those with terminal illness who do not want to take their own lives, that message may be harder and harder to ignore. Please vote no on LD347. Thank you, Madam Speaker.